Nice job, kid. Oh, that's a shot. Hold the tiger. Smart pitch, and you see that flat 
really will do some very good movement, but that movement really... Yeah, she certainly did. She struck out to Spalding and Jella Nickens. you got to protect the plate, right? You're down in the count. And I know that when you're a pitcher and you've got the count like that, you're, you're working the pitches that you Wow. Struck out looking again. And so, again, twice. Really working on the edge of that plate. She's trying to keep everything off if you can. Now, remember, that ball looked like to me that it sailed right over the river, which is the dirt or the clay in between the plate and the inside line of the game. There's that pitch that struck out Spalding in the same spot. She gets two hitters back to back looking. Spalding, Tau Talapua all go down on a pitch on the outside. Clutch is a really good sign. She's working it. Struck out looking. Clyde kind of picking up where she left off in that last inning. Look at Sebekis move over. <laughs> Some people put their glove under their arms. Some people dance to their own too. She just continues to bring it. And again, I mean, she is getting Tau Talapua on the out. Chopped on the ground. DJ 
Shay Sanders had to come a long way. I did not think, look at where she's at. She's got to come all the way over here. I did not think she was going to get to second on time. But Speckus throws this ball down on a line and almost carries her across right into Gordon applying the tag. But I feel like if you're in the back of the box, like they're swinging at pitches, and not even close, but the front of the box, they can at least...
Victoria Hayward, the captain, and he keeps the possibility of at least tying the inning alive. Doesn't want to be going backwards. Here's Morgan Howe. Right back to Ocasio, to second for one, and the throw pulls the runner off the bag. Here comes Shaw to the plate, and she's dead. She's out by 10 feet. Samantha Shaw runs into the final out of the inning. So, Courtney, my question to you is, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are wondering, you're a mom, you're playing, you were a great player before, you're a great player now. Do you feel like you're the same player when you're between the white lines now? Courtney, thank you for your time. Excellent inning. Great play to end the inning. We'll take a look at that one. Welcome back, everyone. We are in review. This play is a play with Victoria Hayward being tagged. The call was out. And Rachel Palmer, our replay official, has the final decision. made it awkward was the bat was not taken away and Vic actually had to go around it. All right, here's the, run the decision. The was tagged on the right leg prior to reaching the base. The call is confirmed. All right, so we know before Victoria Hayward knows. Here's the call on the field. tried to do that like oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> and at that point you know you double hit it anyway so why not take a stab at it and see if it works well, none of the umpires actually said stop <laughs> come on back but I think just being sporting Jacobs came back Svekas is insisting that if you go for it twice it's an out. Ah, this is interesting. Obviously, if you can keep Jake Wish out, that is going to be massive. So let's see if Cat chooses to use a captain's challenge. I think Cat's asking the blue to go and talk with the umpires. Now, Svecka seems to be dead set on the fact that Dickwa should be out. Alright, so as the captain, Ken Osterman feels this is of vital importance. She wants a challenge. Rachel Palmer, our replay official, is being contacted now. So there you see once, twice, and I guess you could make the argument she tried to hit it twice. I don't know why that would make a difference. If it makes a difference, I do believe she intentionally tried to hit it the second time. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Well, because if she were to leave leave this, it could have uh, potentially been a ball that Gwen Svekas uh, might have been able to catch. Okay. Yeah, right. The ball naturally hits the bat twice. 
that's just a play on. It's a dead ball, but it's no harm, no foul. But if you intentionally try and, you could make the argument, hit the ball away from the catcher who's trying to make the play, you don't know where that ball's going to spin to. Huh. I'm going to learn something here. So it pays to watch Athletes Unlimited Softball. We're going to learn something on a Sunday night. Gwen Speck is man, did she seem like she knew that rule? That's why Kat took her in the first round. She's memorizing the rule book. Right, you're looking at Rachel Palmer, our replay official. Rachel, what do we have? We have, an, we have an intentionally batted ball on the second attempt, so we have an out. Wow. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, my goodness. Gwen Speckis saves the day. I think she was one of the only players that had any idea. And Speckis, knowing the rule book, gets the most dangerous hitter in Athletes Unlimited out in an RBI situation. Wow. And it also means they don't have to pitch to Amanda Chittister. With the base open, they just say, we're going to intentionally walk Chittister. Give her eight points. And now Chittister is at first. The bases are loaded uh, for the newest member of Athletes Unlimited, Bubba Nichols. So Chittister at first. Andrews in front of her at second. Good start for Team Osterman. They lead Team McClenny one to nothing as we play the second inning. And we are going to be joined by Gwen Speckis, who is catching right now. I don't like catching Pat Osterman. Gwen, thank you for wearing the microphone and talking to us. Hey, guys. I just want to say you were when I hear talking. Yeah, Pat, here you go. Hi, babe. Gwen, what's it like finally being able to catch for Cat? I mean, it's been a long time. You caught every time last year, but the first couple weeks you didn't, but you were the first round pick for her. Yeah, it was weird having a couple week hiatus, but you know what? It was, it was actually really fun to get. Well, a different experience with other players last year. I felt like they were the only players that really got to settle in in this environment. So it was kind of nice to um, have a chance to play with other people. Hi, when I've heard from catchers sometimes, and they say sometimes that catching a pitcher is so easy, you can do it from a rocking chair. Now, obviously, Cat is one of the all-time greatest, but is she easy to catch or not? Uh, when she's on, she's pretty damn easy to catch, because all i got to do is catch her and throw it back, you know? But uh, the fun that we have together is we're pretty good at being on the same page. Hey, guys, hey, let me know what you think. Here we go. And, uh... Hey Gwen, I gotta mention yesterday, all people at home saw it, but to me it was one of the plays of the game. Your knowledge of the rule book on a ball that Savannah Jaquish tried to bunt and she double hit, that was incredible. Yeah, you know what? If it was anyone else in that situation, I might not have fought it as hard as I did, but last day, to, to lay the basis for Chitty, no thank you. Come to me! Come to me! So. So what? I quit, so what? Ah, so I wanted to fight that one really hard. Didn't end up working out for us, but it was a fun inning of a lot of passion. Here we go! Do you feel like Kat's a pitcher or that if you see something that she needs to make an adjustment on, you can just go up and straight up say, like, hey, you're not you're not coming up the mound hard enough or anything like that? Yeah, you know, I actually um, went up to her before the sleep started. And because I was watching the film from last year and she looked like she was driving off the mound a little bit harder. Nice. Um, and we had a couple of really great bullpens, so I'm just saying this is a play tonight. We didn't have it the other night. I think there were a lot of factors going into that, but um, she looks good today. And we're gonna make this happen. Yeah, cat! Hey, 
Gwen, we're gonna leave your microphone open. We're just gonna listen in for a little bit, okay? Yeah, Kai, here we go. Yeah, D. championships you've won, but as a catcher, there's no honor greater than being picked by a pitcher. No honor. And let alone one of the best pitchers that's ever played. So the first week I was like, well, you know, we were on each other's team for scrimmages. Maybe she's just a little comfortable with me right now. That that makes sense. But the next week it was me again and it was first pick and like I, I wasn't doing well so she could have gotten me probably later in the draft but to know that she held so much importance on having me behind the plate for her is the greatest honor I could ever have. It's the greatest honor a catcher could ever have is to have it, any pitcher pick them but let alone you know, a legend of our game. 
That's really cool. Tell him like it is. A pitcher catcher relationship is so important. And a flip in the batter. Runner on at first, one out. Kind of helps you a lot, but it also helps having someone legit behind the plate. And that's why I wanted to talk about just Gwen Speckett. She was the first round draft pick for Team Everly. And what she brings to the table behind the plate. Like, did you even just see her wiggle yes. with her hips there? And I mean, she's locked in in the sense with, she's on board with these pitchers. She's helping them. She's right there behind them. And I think that's something that is the biggest strength in the circle in that relationship. What did the wiggling of the hips mean? It, the way that kind of Carrie Everly gets around, if her hips come around before her release point, she's not going to be able to get as much downward spin on the ball. So it's just talking a little bit about like keeping your hips back before release. And that could be something that Carrie Everly said to Gwen Speckus and just mentioned, hey, if you see this in my pitching motion, kind of sign this over to me. But I mean, look at that true drop ball spin. That is an unhittable pitch. That's so good. But what's even sweeter is that you have someone behind the plate that respects you, wants to work with you, wants to learn about you, and helps you the whole way through. I didn't say the best. I said she's in the conversation. She, did. For the best she definitely the is. I mean, she batted over 500 in the Olympic Games. So it just goes to show at that stage, her first Olympics ever. Real deal. Last year, Haley McClenney finished 7th, make that 12th, with Athletes Unlimited the year before she There goes Zirkel. Got a late start, and it cost her. She's out of second. Got caught with her hand in the cookie jar. Nice peg by the catcher, Gwen Speckus, and the side is retired. Gwen Speckus. See you later, alligator. Throw on the money to get the speedy Zirkel. Have to figure out a pitch that we can get for a strike. Now she finds herself way behind the half count. There goes Jackson. The throw in time. What a beautiful peg by Speckus. An important second out is recorded on the base pads as Jackson is cut down. That's a negative 10 points for her. And now the bases are clear. All of this is just so good. The throw from Gwen Speckus on the money. Abby Ramirez. Now she was able to cut across to get in front of the base to lay down that tag. Perfect. And out went Speckus. We'll talk with Haley Wagner. Maybe Gwen is telling Haley, hey, when I was batting last minute, that outside part of the plate was <laughs> wide open. <laughs> yeah, I love me some Gwen Speckus. She's just so calm behind the plate, such a good communicator with her pitcher, what they want. She's on board with them. She'll hold them accountable. Oh my goodness, a strikeout for Wagner. Back-to-back -back punch outs. There are now two outs here in the second inning. Haley Wagner just owning this outside corner. This is a back door. Up a little bit. Right this spot. And as Michelle Wagner said, you know, we all know that she's a great catching habit here in game one of two for Team USA with the matchup against Team Japan the following game two of our doubleheader. And Abbott, when she's been out to Birmingham for the start of the World Games this weekend, call strike three, one away as Cox is retired, strikeout number one for Abbott when you think back. Call strike three. Her career, the time she spent in Japan, all her training, you know, enjoying the field, and you know, Monica trying to make those decisions at this point in her career. Well, looks like she's at the peak of her career powers right now. There's that familiar smile as well as she strikes out the side of Australia, and how much softball really means. He pulls the string and gets the strikeout. That's strikeout number seven for Monica Abbott.